welcome to an all new episode of the Transfix Tag Podcast, where we are performance driven. It's the week of August 16th, and we are bringing you news, insights, and trends from none other than our market expert, Justin Mays. Mays, always great to be with you. Hey, Jenny, it's great to be back with you as well this week to talk more about the freight markets as we turn into the second half of August and the back part of Q3. Now, Mays, if I know you well, I feel like you're going to say that there's not too much that's been happening, but we're getting closer to Labor Day. That's right, Jenny. Not a lot of big changes week over week when we look at the full truckload market. And I may start sounding like a broken record from the last two weeks. That's not to say that there aren't things that are happening in the truckload market. It's just we're going to zero into that, right, Mays? That's right, Jenny. One thing that we haven't really spoke about too much recently is the rising cost of fuel. This week, we saw just under a 14 cent increase in the average gallon of diesel fuel week over week. And Jenny, this is a four week increase totaling 57 cents. This is definitely not the news that drivers want to be hearing as we are still in a very tough environment for smaller carriers. This is definitely going to continue to impact the operating costs in the near future because there are pockets where we are seeing rates move upward but not making up for the gains in diesel costs. So then Mays, what do you think is the cause for the rally? Well Jenny, the reasons for the current rally are mostly twofold. Oil stocks are very low and OPEC has been cutting production aggressively whenever oil prices head for $60. In the coming months Jenny, we are most likely going to continue to see fuel volatility. And this is super important for carriers and shippers, but especially smaller and mid-sized carriers to pay attention to. As you know, Jenny, fuel makes up a large portion of operating costs for any power unit. And if fuel is not being considered accurately, then it may cut into your already depressed margins on running a truck, which could put some carriers out of business. And there's a lot of mixed feelings on how the next few months are going to be in the full truckload freight industry. And the next couple of months are going to be insanely critical to the livelihood of a lot of our small carriers, especially owner operators who've really been waiting for the last year or so for the market to flip in their favor. You have some sources such as the CAS Information Systems or CAS calling for a lower for longer freight market. On the other hand, there are plenty of sources calling for the end of the bottoming of the spot market and suggest that we are going to see higher contract rates come in the next few months. Okay, Maze, but my question for you, and it's been a while since we've brought the crystal ball out, but where do you think the market is really going to head in the next few months? Now, Jenny, I think there is plenty of opportunity for the market to shift in either direction or just stay pretty stagnant through the remainder of the year. But we're not going to get into that today. Okay, fair point. That's a tee up for our State of Freight episode with Paul Pozemski coming up in September. We'll give you a deeper dive then. But Maze, what are some call outs you have? Now, Jenny, one thing I definitely want to call out is that volumes are still impressive. Volumes are still higher right now than they have been for the vast majority of 2023. And tender rejections are also slowly ticking upwards. Now, we're still only at 3.5% of contract tenders being rejected, but it's higher than it's been for most of the last few months other than the holiday periods such as 4th July weekend and Memorial Day weekend. Now, if tender rejections continue to rise, as we start approaching Labor Day weekend, it could call for higher tender rejections than we've seen since the beginning of the year. Okay, but Maze, do you think that's actually going to happen? I don't believe so, Jenny. I actually think we're going to start seeing tender rejections start to fall, if not stay stagnant, beginning this week, remaining through next week, before seeing an uptick again as we head into the end of the month and Labor Day weekend. What's funny about this maze is normally you would tie tender rejections and volumes to rates, but it seems like that's a bit disjointed this time. It's actually the opposite right now. Even though tender rejections have been slightly climbing over the last week and volume remains strong and really just slightly picking up some steam, rates have actually fallen. Not surprising. It's also something that you predicted earlier this month. That is right, Jenny. Looking at just line haul, the national average right now is $1.58 per mile. Now, it's kind of been sitting stagnant around that $1.60 with a slight decrease since the 3rd of August. And to be honest, Jenny, we are not going to really see this shift much. We may see a little bit more of a decline going into next week, but that will be erased as we enter the Labor Day weekend, where we'll probably see about that 5% gain in the spot market in favor of carriers. 
And you know what, Maze, at this point, we've been reporting somewhat of a similar trend throughout the last couple of months. So this is something that carriers desperately need, especially heading into what is peak holiday season. Overall, markets have experienced a decline since the beginning of August. As anticipated this past week, we saw a more significant decline than the previous weeks, even though tender rejections have been slowly ticking upward. But still, Jenny, only at 3.5%, which means just about 90% of contract freight is still being accepted by carriers. Now again, that's not helping the smaller carriers out there, Jenny, that live off the spot market. Let's draw some attention to some of those trends that you're seeing in terms of holiday season as we start to get into the November, December months that carriers are really looking forward to. Seasonal trends are standing out in specific regions. It's showing momentum in both ways, with increases in rates in some parts of the country, along with decreases in other parts. We will likely see some upward momentum in overall rates throughout most of the country approaching the Labor Day weekend, which is a normal upward pressure we should expect. Now, the big question is what happens after this final holiday of the summer months as we approach, which is typically a busier month as consumers start spending for the holidays. But like I said, Jenny, a lot of how the rest of the year plays out is going to be tied to the overall broader macroeconomic condition of the United States. Now, keep in mind, in October, student loan payments go back into effect. So that's one factor that could play into less spending, which means less freight being moved throughout the overall markets. But we're going to keep an eye on that and make sure everyone's well informed. One thing that I do want to call out though while we're on the subject of consumer spend is that it did rise by a half percent just a little bit in June. Those numbers may or may not rise, but some of the more notable spending were financial services and insurance, uh, housing utilities and recreational services, including uh, motor vehicles and parts. But I will say that that rise was nominal and less than what was originally forecasted. But you know what it's time for? The regional breakdown. Let's talk about the Northeast and the Midwest. As expected, capacity in the Northeast and Midwest is starting to tighten as the average rate increases for freight originating out of these regions. This is a normal seasonal trend that we definitely anticipated driving into the fall. And we will likely continue to see more pressure build in parts of these regions as we head farther into winter months. Now, again, it's not just the Northwest and Midwest, the Pacific Northwest is seeing the most seasonality pressure, driving rates up the fastest. Now let's move over to the South and the Southeast. I know that we're starting to see more of a decline over there in terms of rates. What are you seeing? Over the following week, rates will continue to decline, but going into the holiday week will probably prevent them from declining too much more. And to be honest, the Southeast has already started to see the decline slow down. And let's take a look at one of the more active markets that we've had in the past couple of weeks, the West Coast. What are we seeing? Well, Jenny, the West Coast is still a pretty volatile region. Last week, I called out that the larger markets in Southern California were still picking up some steam with increases. Well, that's changed. Southern California, the large markets by volume, such as Los Angeles and Ontario, are actually starting to see decreasing rates now. But that does not account for the northern markets, such as Stockton and Fresno. They are more following the path of the Pacific Northwest with that domino effect of capacity and rates continue to drive higher as we drive farther into the produce season for that region. Well, Maze, despite the lack of movement when it comes to rates in our regional breakdown, there is certainly a lot for us to keep an eye on. Now, of course, we'll keep an eye on fuel and any potential breakdowns that we may see in the weeks ahead. But keep in mind, it is still hurricane season and not that I'm wishing anything like that to happen, but there's always a Black Swan event that could potentially change the name of the game. That said, we will see you next week with an all new episode of the Transfix Take podcast. And until then, of course, as always, drive safely. All views and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views or positions of Transfix Inc. or any parent companies or affiliates or the companies with which the participants are affiliated and may have been previously disseminated by them. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are based upon information considered reliable, but neither Transfix Inc. nor its affiliates nor the companies with which the participants are affiliated warrant its completeness or accuracy and it should not be relied upon as such. All views and opinions are subject to change.